سنريهم آياتنا في الآفاق وفي أنفسهم حتى يتبين لهم أنه الحق أولم يكف بربك أنه على كل شيء شهيد We will show them our signs in the horizons and within themselves until it becomes clear to them that it is the truth. But is it not sufficient concerning your Lord that he is over all things a witness? Mohammed could not have known these facts about human development in the 7th century because most of them were not discovered until the 20th century. This is a leech, and this is the human embryo, about 23 days. I think you have to agree that the similarity between these uh, structures is amazing. The key word in both is Al-Ghaida. At this stage, it is known to no one except Allah. The rapid growth and dramatic changes which occur after the bones have been clothed by muscles have been mentioned in the Holy Quran 1400 years ago. Ayah 79, I mean Surah 79, Ayah 32 states, also in the context of creation, and the mountains hath he firmly fixed. Similar mention of mountains is found in several other surahs. It is permissible to interpret this to imply that mountains are rooted and that modern, ge and modern geophysics has established deep crustal roots for the axial parts of mountain systems at converging plate boundaries. We need research into the history of early Middle Eastern oral traditions to know whether, in fact, such historical events have been reported. If there is no such record, it strengthens the belief that God transmitted through Muhammad bits of his knowledge that we have only discovered for ourselves in recent times. Thinking of many of these questions and thinking uh, where Muhammad came from, he was after all a Bedouin. I think it is almost impossible that he could have known about things like the common uni uh, origin of the universe because scientists have only found out within the last few years with very complicated and advanced technological methods that this is the case. Somebody who did not know something about nuclear physics 1400 years ago could not, I think, been in a position to find out from his own mind, for instance, that the earth and the heavens had the same origin, or many other of the questions that we have discussed here. I find it very interesting that this sort of information is, is in the uh, ancient scriptures of the Holy Quran, and uh, I have no way of, of knowing where they would come from, but uh, I think it is extremely interesting that they are there and that this work is going on to discover uh, the meaning of some of the passages. Well, I would think it must be the divine being. In a relatively few ayah is contained a rather comprehensive description of human development from the time of commingling of the gametes through organogenesis. No such distinct and complete record of human development, such as classification, terminology, and description, existed previously. In most, if not all, instances, this description antedates, by many centuries, the recording of the various stages of human embryonic and fetal development recorded in the traditional scientific literature. And Muhammad was a very ordinary man. He couldn't have read, he didn't know to write. In fact, he was an illiterate. And uh, we're talking about 1,200 years ago, you have someone, an illiterate person, making profound pronouncements and statements uh, that um, are amazingly accurate of a scientific nature. And I don't, I personally can't see how this could be a mere chance. There are too many accuracies. And 
like Dr. Moore, I have no difficulty in my mind reconciling that this is a divine inspiration or revelation um, which led him to these statements. Summary. The Quran describes not only the development of external form, but emphasizes also the internal stages, the stages inside the embryo of its creation and development, emphasizing major events recognized by contemporary science. Thank you for your attention. Uh, as a scientist, I can only deal with things which I can specifically see. Uh, I can understand embryology and developmental biology. Uh, I can understand the words that are translated to me from the Koran. Uh, as I gave the example before, uh, if I were to transpose myself into that era, knowing what I knew, do today and describing things, I could not describe the things which uh, were described. Uh, I see no reason, uh, I see no evidence for the fact uh, to refute the concept uh, that uh, this individual, Muhammad, had to be developing this information from someplace. Uh, so I see nothing here in conflict with the concept that uh, divine intervention was involved in, in what he was able Actually, I'm very much impressed by finding true astronomical facts in Quran. And for us, we modern astronomers have been studying very small fields of the universe. We concentrated our efforts to, for understanding of very small part because by using telescope we can see only a very few parts of the sky without thinking all the universe. So uh, by reading Koran and by answering to your questions I think I can find my future way for investigation of the universe. And then when I was maybe about one-third in Quran, I remember telling my wife, you know, this Muhammad, he must have been a very smart, very intelligent man, because this book is very clear, very logical, very easy to follow, and there are no contradictions. But then as I read later, I suddenly saw a scientific fact which I knew was only discovered in the 20th century. So immediately I saw that Muhammad is not the author of the Quran. Well, that Muhammad is a messenger sent by God to give the Quran to mankind. I saw, mashallah, Muhammad is Rasulullah. So I said, Mashallah, I'm a Muslim. It is a great pleasure and an honor for me to introduce to you an eminent scientist and a scholar of Quran. Dr. Maurice Bukail, pronounced as Maurice Bukai, am I right, Doctor? Matter. Okay. Uh, he's a native of France. He is a medical doctor and his specialty is surgery. Ladies and gentlemen, assalamu alaikum. There is no human work prior to modern times that contains statements which were equally in advance of the state of knowledge at the time they appeared and which might be compared to the Quran. 1,400 years ago, when the world was immersed in darkness, the Quran was revealed, which brought light to a beleaguered world. 
And whereas the earlier books came with many scientific mistakes, due to the hand of man having delved into them, the Quran had none of these contradictions. The world thought there could be no reconciliation between religion and science. But the Quran mentioned many scientific facts in great detail, like how a human being developed in the mother's womb, and described other scientific facts which amaze the world's renowned scientists and scientific community.